Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll go through the two Maple Tree Brothers results, which is Maple Tree Logistic Trust and Maple Tree Industrial Trust. So for those who are new to the Maple Tree reads, you can see my previous video on the full analysis on either of them. Okay, so the reason why I consider both of them a safer read as compared to the rest is because firstly, their sponsor is Maple Tree, obviously, and Maple Tree is owned by who? They are owned by Temasek, which is essentially the Singapore government. So with the indirect interest with the SG government, I feel that the risk of them collapsing is very, very low. So just a brief quick look at their asset under management. For Maple Tree Industrial Trust, which has assets of up to 9.2 billion SGD, has jack of all trades of different assets, such as business space, life sciences or high-tech buildings, industrial and data centers. So the, the only thing that they do not have is logistics. Whereas Maple Tree Logistic Trust, which has assets of 13.3 billion, has only logistic assets. So when you're buying these two rates, you can consider which industry or which category that you would want. And that's how they are being differentiated by the Maple Tree organization. So let's get straight forward to the Maple Tree Logistic results first. So as you can see from the recent results, their revenue and MPI and DPU increased year over year by 1.5%, 1.2% and 0.9% respectively. And this is quite remarkable considering that most of the REITs are actually experiencing a decrease or decline in DPU. But we will later look at the quarter over quarter to see what is the actual trend that might be happening. So for the occupancy wise, there's only a slight drop from 97.1% to 96.9%, which is still at a very healthy level. Rental reversion is at a worry variable of 0.2%. But if we see later on, it was due to a China tier 2 logistics that was having a negative rental reversion. Excluding that, we have been a healthy level of 9.1% increase. Their leverage ratio is at 38.9% drop down from 39.5%, whereas their debts are hedged at 83% with the average debt maturity of 3.8 times. So they have also made a lot of different portfolio adjustments such as the divestment and the good thing is that all of the assets are actually divested at above valuation. So this actually shows that the properties are actually in demand, especially for logistic warehouses. And you can see this highlighted part where the green certified space increased by 54%. So this green certified space is actually very important because it helps or it allows REITs to get sustainable loans which are actually much lower interest as compared to normal loans. So that's why if you notice that a lot of REITs are actually trying to enter into being green certified building so that it not only attracts tenants because of sustainability, but it also can receive loans at lower interest rates. So looking at their Q over Q balance sheet, honestly, I'm quite impressed with their results because if you see the changes Q over Q is mostly positive across the board. Revenue increased by 2.5%. Property expenses increased by 2.7%. Why? It's partially because of the additional costs from running the new asset. So for their debts, actually decreased Q over Q from 39.5% to 38.9% due to loan repayment, where their average loan actually remained stable at 2.5%. However, their adjusted interest coverage ratio, which includes perpetual securities, dropped to 3.2 times. So my concern will be once they are required to renew or refinance their loan, this average of 2.5% might increase. So we have to observe and see if this increase, how does it actually impact their interest coverage ratio or how does Maple Tree Logistic Trust maneuver around this. For their debt profile wise, most of the loans are actually after financial year of 2024 slash 25 onwards. So this financial year actually only is required at the second half of 24 to refinance. So that's the good thing is that they only re require to refinance during this period. So hopefully by then interest rate might have come down and this will actually prevent their cost of debt from increasing too much. 
for Maple Tree Logistics Trust, it actually has a lot of assets in many different countries, up to nine countries. So if you are those investors that are more interested in making sure that your assets are in different countries, Maple Tree Logistics Trust can be one for you to consider. For the occupancy wise, there's not much changes except for Japan, which actually dropped from 100% to 98.9%. However, the good thing is that you can see that it's expected to be backfilled by the third quarter, which is the next quarter itself. So there are already tenants coming in to replace the drop in occupancy. And you can see here, portfolio rental reversion was only at 0.2%. This was because due to China's negative rental reversion of 8.6% in tier 2 assets. So it's because of this that caused the drop. Else, it would have been a healthy level growth of 9.1%. So overall for Maple Logistic Trust, they're still doing decently well. The only thing that will be a concern will be how much the cost of debt will increase once they will be required to refinance. So we we'll have to continue seeing what will be the changes. Before I continue my video, I would like to share one of the new brokers that I'm using in the US market trading, and that is Webu. Webu is a low commission based broker used by popular users or YouTubers such as Mick Kevin. Now, for the remaining month of November, they will give an amazing promotion when you sign up with my link today. You can get at least USD $100 to $5,000 worth of free shares when you deposit any amount and leave it inside for 30 days. Moreover, they also provide 31 days of commission free for US trading. So Webu also have another promotion which is their Moneyboo. So Moneyboo is an area where you can use your ideal cash to subscribe to funds and that will allow you to earn daily interest and even earn stock vouchers now because of the promo. So now deposit at least 3000 USD onwards will earn you additional cash vouchers on top of the daily interest that you will earn. So sign up today on my link to open your Webu account today. So let's get right back into the analysis. So for MIT analysis, it will be deeper because they have an earnings call that occurred for second Q. Earnings call are the best place to get information where it's not stated in the slides or in the reports. So let's get right into it. Starting off looking at their key highlights. Distributable income increased by 3.5% year over year. Following that, DPU actually decreased by 1.2% year over year because due to enlarged unit base. So they actually did a fundraising exercise which resulted in a lower DPU. Good performances across the board with a positive rental reversion and higher rental average rate for both Singapore and North American properties. The management highlighted is that they have actually finally completed the acquisition of the Japan data center and they expect the distribution to start from Q3 onwards. So later on, I will share more information about what was being asked. That was quite interesting. They can tell how much the Japan DC that they are expecting to contribute to the distributable income. Hedge borrowing is at 79.2% for all the borrowings with a healthy leverage ratio of 7.9%. This was also helped by the equity fundraising exercise and the distributable reinvestment plan that occurred last year. So if we look at their past distributable or DPUs, they are still remain at quite stable within this range of 3.3 to 3.5. So hopefully in the long term, Maple Tree Industrial Trust will continue to increase as the interest rate decreases. Looking at the Q over Q balance sheet, the property expenses has increased by a significant value of 14.5%. In the earnings call, an analyst asked regarding this increase in the property expenses and the management have given quite a few interesting information about it. The property expenses increased slightly for Singapore's side due to utilities with higher tariffs and the new assets of Kalang Way. Assets in the US had a much significant increase in the property expenses as mentioned by the management that the NPI margin has dropped due to the following reason. Firstly, expense charges to tenants was at a later date. Secondly, rent-free periods for new leases of tenants. And lastly, lower pass-through income 
which meant more income is required to pay for taxes. So these three factors were the significant contribution for the rise in property expenses. Next, the impressive thing about the Q over Q balance sheet is that the borrowing cost actually surprisingly went down by 0.5% quarter over quarter. So it was, was partially because of debt payments that were being paid down. So distributable income was at 94 million with a DPU of 3.32. However, do take note that there was additional distribution being included of about 3.15 million due to the divestment gains of these two properties. Excluding these divestment gains, the DPU might be around 3.22 cents. So this is something that you have to take note of when it comes to investing in Maple Tree Industrial Trust. Always assume for the worst case to get the better case. For their debt wise, it has dropped slightly from 38.2% to 37.9%. That maturity profile wise, the management have mentioned during the earnings call that for the full year of 224-25 of the 544.9 million, most of it is the Japan yen due to the additional Japanese data center where the rest is of course SGD plus USD. However, they will be refinancing it soon and the good thing is that because it's a Japan debt, the interest rate will be definitely much lower as compared to refinancing for SGD and USD. If we look at these slides, although the, or the cost of debt has dropped from 3.5% to 3.2% over quarter over quarter, there is something that needs to be taken note of. So during the earnings call, they have actually give some insights into it. And they have actually mentioned that they are expected to re maintain within 3.2 to 3.5% for this year. The drop also occurs due to the additional borrowing of the yen which is at a lower interest rate compared to the SGD and USD. However, in the next year, it's expected to go up because they have actually mentioned that the interest on of the debts borrowed previously for the US data center joint venture is going to be refinanced as the hedge expires. So they have hinted that previously the loan was only at 1% plus plus. So refinancing now or next year might go up to 4% for a certain amount of the debts. So this is something that you need to expect for the next year. So the point to, to focus on for their tenant lease is their AT&T. By November of this year, this lease of from AT&T will be expiring soon. So hopefully they have mentioned that for Q4, they would be able to get some good news. However, it's expected that the gross rental income from this new renewal will be lower because renewing a big tenant or having a new big tenant in would be required to give tenant incentives. So the initial new lease or the renewal will be slightly lower in terms of income contribution. On a positive note, surprisingly, their rental reversion came in much better as compared to the previous few quarters. As you see, the new renewals are having a, a higher value. Renewals also came in higher rental. So this is a good thing because this actually shows that the renewals and the leases are coming at a higher income, therefore allowing a positive rental reversion of 8.8%. So for their Kalong Way assets, there's a lot of good and bad pointers to take note of. The bad pointers are is that the first thing is that the occupancy actually has grown at a very slow pace. From the Q1 from 44.1%, it has only grown to 48.2%. This is way lower at the growth rate than expected. So one of the reasons is that it was due to slower in markets because not many larger users wants to commit into renting a large area. So they are looking into accumulating more small users for renters for different purposes. So the good thing is that they are actually keeping the renters at $4 per square feet because they feel that the quality of the building justifies the rental fees. And secondly, their property is very versatile in adapting to different fields of customers. So it's actually able to take in more different industries or have a more variety to choose from. So hopefully as the market recovers, the rental for this asset will improve over time. There are also good additional pointers that we can get from the earnings call. The management are focusing on re-enhancing their assets 
and recalibrating, such that the divestment of the business part and flatter factories and focusing on high-tech buildings and data centers is what they are aiming for. However, they are not rushing in selling if the valuation does not come at the right price. Second, the Japan data center's contribution might be quite significant because after calculating, they say that if the contribution had came in, the DPU for Q2 might have seen a marginal growth rather than a decrease. So the, this actually meant that it is able to offset the huge rise in the property expenses, which might be a good thing for the next quarter. However, for the next financial year, the concern will be how high the cost of debt will rise because the management has actually said that it will continue going up because of the refinancing and they expect it to be maybe around in the 4% range. So be prepared if you are investing in Maple Tree Industrial Trust. The flatter factories that they are looking to sell is about in the assets of about 500 to $1 billion. And the last point is that acquisition now is very difficult due to high interest environment. Of course, Japan is one area that they are looking at because due to the attractive interest rate and the currency decrease. So this is one area that they are currently looking into, but they are not rushing to buy if the, it does not come at the right price or at the right ROI. Overall, I still feel that Maple Tree Logistic and Industrial Trust are still managing well. It's only when you are buying the REITs, it's important to buy at the right price. Currently, my risk tracker is actually showing a dividend yield of 5.79 for Maple Tree Industrial Trust at the current share price of $2.27, while Maple Tree Logistic Trust is giving a dividend of 5.67% at $1.58. So if you are an investor that feels that this dividend is a reasonable amount, then this is a right price to consider. However, if you would like a higher yield, then you have to buy at a lower share price. So I hope that this video actually provides some help for you when it comes to analyzing Maple Tree Industrial and Logistic Trust. Please support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe, or comment on anything that you want me to work on. You can also further support the channel by actually clicking on the links in the video descriptions for any referrals. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.